A challenging pea gravel cushion surface welcomes the Indian Motorcycle Lima Half Mile presented by Johnny K's Indian. Round eight of the American Flat Track Championship. Pivotal round for everyone. Flat Track Motorcycle Racing. Just to recall what it was like in the beginning, let us take a quick look back at the turn of the century. It takes stout lads like them to go for this kind of competition. It's trials like this that have made the two-wheel little giant the tough piece of mechanism it is today. Take a look at this motorcycle. Each of today's races draws large crowds from all over the country. It's an evolution. Testing and bettering. Testing and perfecting. Right up, cowboy. The wave of the future. Got a good start anyway. Yeah, and we'll see how hot I was the whole time. Every chance I get to race now, I enjoy it. What will you do? How hard are you willing to go? Will you let fear win? Or will you rise? Big one for Jeremy. And find victory. Shayna Hester hates the win. It changes the way you look at racing. Briar Bauman's podium streak is perfect throughout the 2019 season. That puts the pressure on Jared Mees to try to catch him. And Mees has pressure from the other side because he is the promoter of this race at Lima, but he did win it last year. And Jared Vanderkoy and the Vance and Hines factory Harley Davidson team are getting fast for each week looking for the win. In our singles division, the Honda band Mikey Rush has two victories in a row and has taken this series lead. But Shayna Texter on the Red Bull KTM. She won this race last year and going to try to get back in the series hunt and a debut for the highly anticipated 16 year old Dallas Daniels coming out of the amateur ranks will be racing with the single division Jason Wygant joined by AJ Allmendinger Kristen Beat patrolling the racetrack we're going to go racing at Lima one of the very unique surfaces here's your point standings first Briar Bauman Hasn't had any difficulties this season. Been consistent, got a 34 point lead. Jared Mees at a racetrack that he promotes has to step up and try to shrink this points gap. A lot of pressure on Mees to try to close that up as we're headed toward the second half of the season. Here is the Lima track. What's it all about? Half mile racetrack. The unique part of this racetrack is the fact that it's pea gravel. We'll see multi-groove racing, bikes sliding around, using the bottom, using the top, which really lends itself for fantastic battling side by side. And a whole lot of roost coming off of the rear tire as well. We mentioned Jared Mees. It's the promoter of this race. Kristen cut up with he and his wife, Nicole. Jared and Nicole Meese definitely have their hands full this weekend in Lima, Ohio. Nicole, you're a racer, wife, mother, and now promoter. What prompted you to take on that role this weekend? You know, I always knew I wanted to stay in the motorcycle industry. It's been a part of my whole entire life. Um, I grew up racing and then went into the pro ranks and then eventually retired and had our daughter. So um, this was a, a neat way for me to stay involved in the sport um, and not necessarily be out on the racetrack um, with the risk, you know, with both Jared and I out there. It's just a really cool, unique, you know, it's close to home. So it's easy for us to get down here. We have a ton of people behind us uh, sponsoring the event um, so just a great event all the way around and the Lima fans there's nothing else you know there's no other fans like them out there so Nicole thanks so much Jared this weekend you're riding and promoting how do you kind of balance the two I got one heck of a, a crew really um, my wife Nicole does an amazing job Steve Beatty who used to race back in the day a good friend of mine runs basically the day-to-day -day operation stuff here uh, you know I got some family here friends so I got a great crew Brent Pierce Kurt Emmerich there's just a lot of people that really contribute a lot to this program uh, for a lot of years I mean there's guys here that know way more me way more than me about promoting this race so uh, far as balance I'm the racer today this is my deal and uh, I'm going out there to win this race but uh, this is one of my favorite tracks. It was my very first Grand National win back in 2005. And uh, for me, it's kind of like a hometown race. Um, this is a legendary race. I think we're going on 35 years. So uh, this is this is one of the baddest races on the on the circuit. Jared, thanks so much. Jason, as you know, Jared won this race back in 2018. He's looking to go back to back. A one rider looking to challenge Mies for the win tonight is Jared Vanderkoy. He and the Vance and Hines Harley team keep making gains, and maybe that'll turn out to be a win here tonight in the Pea Gravel. Let's send it to Jared Vanderkoy. 
Hey guys, Jared Vanderkoy, 21 years old, riding for the Factory Harley Davidson Vanson Heinz team. I've been racing motorcycles ever since I was 10 years old. Started riding when I was three, but then started taking it serious up until I was 10. The sport of flat track in general is, you know, crazy. 100 mile an hour, bar banging action, you know, people are getting sprayed, roosted, bucked around on their motorcycle. It's definitely a thrill. You gotta get out here and see it in person. The prestige of riding for the factory Harley team is awesome because growing up, you looked up to those guys, you know, the Scotty Parker, the Jay Springsteen, and now to say you're one of those guys, I still don't believe it. The team and I work very well together and it's very motivating to me to be able to talk to those guys on a personal level and understand each other on race day to make the changes that we need to go to the front. Oh! Vanderpoy goes down. They say they call me Captain Chaos, but I feel like I'm a pretty conservative rider. I do get a little Western sometimes, so you gotta take it easy. But sometimes you know you gotta know when to hang it out. When you're out there racing, you're trying to find that edge, you know, you're pushing your limits, what your bike is capable of, what you're capable of, and what the track's capable of. So you gotta find the edge at all three of those and somehow put it together. It's very difficult, definitely, you know, if you're struggling that day, you're not in it mentally or physically or whatever the deal is. So it's on those days and making it the best is what I strive for. My 2019 season, I couldn't ask for more as far as, you know, the strides that the Harley team has made this year. We've been working every weekend. We've got four fourths this year in 2019, so we've been so close to the box out of two of those. It's crazy, and just I've never stepped foot on the box in this class, so that's something we're striving for. Well, we'll get to our AFT Twins presented by Vance and Hines storyline. That podium is not coming tonight for Vander Koik's for this crash earlier. Gets in the corner, loses the rear end, hits a rut. He goes down hard. Fortunately, he'd be okay, but he will not be able to race in the main event tonight. Yeah, so all that momentum he had coming in is squandered. Had a chance to talk to Jared about it. This went in turn three and hooked a hole, you know, and it, uh, this track's been notorious for it, but uh, unfortunately this one well, we, could, we couldn't save. So uh, we're gonna sit out today and just make sure the body's all right, and uh, we're gonna be come back, we'll be ready. And then some more bad luck. Watch the outside here. Brandon Robinson, second in the series points. Two wins this year. The hand is up because the bike isn't running. And you see the frustration. Each rider can use a provisional to get into the main once this year, but he used it at the last race. So he's not going to make the main. Meanwhile, Briar Bauman, your series leader, look at this lead. Just a small eight-second victory in the <laughs> semi, showing his dominance so far. Hey, what'd you say about multiple grooves here, semi two? This is what I love about the racing so far today. Lima, Ohio, this racetrack about five grooves wide. You can see Carver and Henry Wiles battling here. Jared Mees under Henry Wiles for second. It's just setting itself up for an awesome main event. Every time you thought you had it figured out, the lines would change. Carver looking to get on track after a slow start to the season takes the win over Mees and Wiles. Those three were on the podium in the main event at this race last year. But Briar Bauman, a dominant performance in his semi. Sets up for some awesome racing tonight in the gravel and in our singles class. We've already got some hype because Dallas Daniels has finally turned 16 and the amateur phenom is now a pro. We'll get into our singles division when we return. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. If you go down, call Russ Brown. By Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas, the entitlement sponsor of AFT Singles. And by Cat Rental Store, the official heavy equipment supplier of American Flat Track. Roof Systems AFT Singles Class standings, the RMR Honda out front. Mikey Rush coming off two wins in a row, but Shayna Texter, sixth in points. This is the time she has to get it going if she wants a chance at the championship. And Kristen caught up with the Red Bull KTM rider earlier today. Shayna Texter won this race in 2018. She also won on the half mile in Texas in April. Shayna, what makes you so effective within this distance and more specifically on this track? Uh, I think, you know, especially here at Lima, it's a lot faster of a racetrack. You carry more momentum through the corners. Uh, you know, this this track here at Lima is definitely won by staying on the gas, so it kind of fits my style a little bit more. Don't have to worry so much about uh, grip and traction. Shayna, as we near that halfway point on the season, have you and the Red Bull KTM team met your expectations? 
Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're meeting them. Um, you know, definitely not, not winning uh, the first mile of the year was a little bit of a disappointment. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're hungry to keep on going. And, um, you know, it was nice to get that first win out of the way in Texas. But we're definitely ready for another one. And ready for his first one is Dallas Daniels, the rookie. Just had to wait till he turned 16 to finally a bit to go racing pro with the Estenson Racing Squad, the 163. That's actually in honor of his team owner, Tim Estenson, who used to run that number. So this is the new kid on the block. Let's get to know Dallas Daniels. I've been watching since I was seven years old, so to be able to just go and put on my leathers and race a motorcycle at the pro tracks is going to be awesome for me. I have the speed and the talent, I'd say, to go in and do what I need to do in the pro races. I deserve to be up there and, you know, wh whatever they think, I don't know what them guys are thinking, but I'm just worried about me and what I need to do when I get to the races. If you ever come to the pro races and watch me when I'm not riding, I'm just kind of standing there listening. I walk up to the track. I walk out with Ryan in the main event. and I kind of just want to be everywhere and hear everything that's going on because it's just more learning for me. The funny thing about that is Tim signed me before he ever even seen me ride a motorcycle. So he was just signing me off of what he had heard from other people, which is also very special because it means that people see that I have the speed and they're saying great things about me. But I would go clear because you don't have no players. Right. right. It's a great race, right? From watching Ryan, I've learned that I just need to be quick and spontaneous with talking about setup and stuff with my mechanic. And I listen to JD and Colby and Jake, and sometimes I'll just listen to them talking with their mechanics and just see what they're saying just for my own memory bank that I can use when I come in. I love to train with them guys because I love to see what they're doing and apply it to what I'm doing and see if it helps. And there's definitely a lot of pressure being signed with such a great team with great sponsors. With all this stuff and all the people and sponsors, there's definitely pressure to do good, but I've talked with Tim and my, my mechanic, my father, and everybody about what we need to do, and it's just go and race. You don't need to worry about all of that your first year. Just get the first year jitters out and go racing. Roof Systems AFT Singles class already loaded with talent. We throw another one in there. Just as an example, this is half the field, semi number one, and it is stacked. Looks like the main event here. Ryan Wells gets the whole shot, but Shannon Texter rolls the outside off of turn two to take the lead. And she's got a Red Bull KTM teammate, Dan Bromley, been waiting for last year's champ to come to life. Good battle on our hands. He gets second, but look at the lead. Shannon was able to open up. Shannon Texter is going to be tough to beat in the main event. Maggie Rush in third. Here we go to semi number two. We got Chad Coase in a good battle with Dalton Gauthier. And loving that low line for Gauthier. Chad Coase was our fastest qualifier today. So far showing the speed in semi two, holding off Dalton Gauthier. And Dallas Daniels takes third, so he's into the main event. Mikey Rush in the RMR Honda's ready. Can he get three wins in a row? That would be huge. It'd be three totally different tracks as well. Shayna Texter, though, has to be the favorite after that strong performance in qualifying and winning this race last year. Let's send it to Kristen. Dallas Daniels is the Nikki Hayden Horizon Award winner in both flat track and road racing. But today in first qualifying, he found himself sitting 21st on the board. Now, rather than panic, uh, he found himself asking his teammate, Ryan Wells, for just a little bit of advice. His teammate told him that they needed to make some changes, some drive changes, and he moved into eighth by second qualifying. Now, guys, there's so much maturity and poise in Dallas Daniels' race program. He doesn't ride over his ability. He's observant, he's calculated, and he adjusts without getting getting discouraged. He finished third in his semi. Watch his progress through the pack. I really think Dallas Daniels has a lot to offer in this singles class. Here's the Russ Brown starting lineup in the singles division. So Texter has the good grid position. Interesting to see what Bromley can do. He's been consistent as usual, but no wins yet this year. He looked good. This could be the moment. But I don't know, man. And this pea gravel plus vision, really going to be a huge factor on the start. Whole shot's gonna be critical, getting that clean vision off of turn two. Here we go, 15 laps, and on one of the most unique surfaces in all of motorsports, the pea gravel here in Lima. Let's go racing. And Texter, she chose a start spot toward the outside. It didn't work. Bromley, I think, is gonna lead them in. And who's gonna lead them coming out? Chad Coase. 
Coast off turn two to the lead. Dan Bromley second. We see Shana Texter third. Dalton Gauthier gonna run the bottom, trying to get around everybody off of turn four to lead the first lap. Oh, we saw him use that in the semi. Didn't quite work, but you love all the options they have. Texter going to work now on Gauthier for third. Bromley going to work on Coast for the lead. This is fantastic racing. Love the sound of those singles bike going down the front short. A packed house here at Lima, Ohio. On board with Shana Texter. Lap two. Look at this. Look at her vision, Jason. Already covered in dirt. But I think she was able to execute the pass on Gautier, and she's got to go because Mikey Rush is in the battle as well. She actually wiped and then grabbed the tear off. That is awesome. You've got to try to conserve on those tear offs so you use the hand when you can. Bromley, meanwhile, going after Coast. Coast got a couple of Red Bull KTM bikes on the back of him. He's been fast all night. Dan Bromley. Been consistent all year, but never really shown the speed to win. Can this be the night? The 94 of Wells right in it as well. And the two riders battling right now in the front of the standings, Gautier and Rush. They're right there, fourth and fifth behind Texter. Bromley wants the lead. He's got the inside. They almost come together. Top three starting to stretch it. Shana Texter watching Bromley and Coast battle for the lead, starting to make gains already. Bromley's ridden well this year, but we haven't seen many good starts. At our last one, he was finally there. Just didn't execute the way he wanted down the stretch. Didn't get the win. We'll see what he can do with a start. Oh, boy. Shayna Texter has caught them. Shayna on board again. You can see around the outside of Dan Bromley, her teammate. She has found the high line, making it work where nobody is riding. So that's a couple passes for Shayna now using that high line. Can she use it to take the lead from Coast? Can Bromley get his teammate back? Still a three rider, freight train up front. Gotye and Rush having a tremendous battle for fourth. Every point's gonna count in this championship. These riders know it. You can see the intensity. Shayna just keeps going higher and higher. Trying to clean that pea gravel off the top line, find the cushion. She's got a draft down the back straight away. Will she go to the bottom? She does into three. Clears Chad Coast for the lead. And listen to the crowd. Shayna Texter from about fifth to first. Crowd is on their feet. She goes by Coast, and all of a sudden, she's got a five bike link lead. Bromley to second under Coast. Think he's got it. Coast going to try to come back. Bromley used that line about three laps ago. It didn't work. It doesn't work again. And as those two start battling, it only helps Texter extend the lead. Bromley just able to finally make it stick on Coase. Bromley knows if he wants any chance to go chase down his teammate, he has to go now. Shayna Texter already with a second lead. Yeah, prime points opportunity for Bromley, who's third coming into this race. Texter is 72 points down in this championship, so she's going to have to be nearly perfect in the second half of this year. And she's doing the right things right now. Not a good start, but quickly taking the lead. Here is Gote in the pink helmet. He's got heat behind him. Wells at the back of this train, trying to make some moves. You can see how tough this roost is. It's already covered. You can't even tell the numbers on the bikes behind Dalton Gautier. It's all on the line right now. Can Texter make a breakaway on Bromley and Coast? Find out next. Big news when factory Red Bull KTM announced an American flat track effort for the 2019 season. It has all come together tonight. Their riders are running one, two, Shane and Texter, Dan Bromley. Great racing behind them. You got Kevin Stallings, Coase, Wells, Rush, Bromley. In formation, Bromley's got a little gap, but not too much. Meanwhile, Gautier there in the pink helmet, he has been in a battle every single inch of this race. First with Rush, now with Wells on the outside, the Yamaha trying to make the move. Gautier running the bottom, which is the shorter way around this racetrack, but it's dry slick down there, meaning it's hard packed. The rear tire spinning. Because of that, Ryan Wells gets under him. Gautier back around him. Ryan Wells back under him again. Whoa. Oh, big bump there. Gautier almost goes down. Ryan Wells. Can't quite get it done, or can he? Oh, it amazes me the trust these riders have to throw it in there like that. I mean, a game of inches literally through there. He almost ran into the leg of Gautier. Gautier's going to try to get him back. Wow, just like that, two to go. And just like that, Shayna Texter has checked out.
Shayna Texter in a different zip code. Looks like Bromley's safe for second. There's a battle on for the podium between Coase and Mikey Rush. This would be huge for Rush. Critical juncture here. Championship points on the line. Your series leader is fourth. He wants to take third away from Coase. Coase looking for a podium, not going to give that up easily. It looks like the KTMs have got it dialed in tonight with a 1-2 finish in route. But who's going to take third and how's it going to affect the championship? What a ride by Shayna Texter. She's got complete control of her line. She won it in 2018. And despite a bad start, she's going to win again in 2019. Listen to the crowd erupt as she crossed the line. Bromley for second. Coast holds on to third. Mikey Rush fourth. Ryan Wells needed just a couple more laps and would have got that podium. Yeah, he really found his pace late in it getting around Gautier. If you're Bromley, you got to be happy with that because it's pushing the riders ahead of him in the standings back a few more spots tonight. Here are your results. Yeah, Gautier rode well, but a sixth with Bromley getting second and Rush in fourth. That's going to push him back a little bit in the standings. Dallas Daniels, a solid debut at 11th. Not bad for the 16-year-old. Let's send it to Kristen with the winner. Shayna Texter with her second win of the 2019 American Flat Track Series in the singles division. Shayna Texter also won this race in 2018. Her first win of this season came at the Texas Half Mile in April. Shayna, you were so smooth in the corners and you were making this track look easy. You were able to check out, gain over a two second lap time differential on the rest of the field. How were you able to do it out there, girl? <laughs> Just staying on the gas. Uh, man, when I was stuck behind uh, Dan and Chad, the visibility was so tough. A couple times I came off four, I couldn't see anything. So I'm like, the only way visibility is gonna get good is to stay on the gas and get around these guys. And uh, that's what I did. I didn't want to battle with them too much. and. Uh, my KTM <laughs> Red Bull motorcycle backed by roof systems just works so good here and uh, can't thank the team enough for this win. When you had a work around Chad Coase and Dan Bromley both, at any point did you think one would be harder to pass than the other and how were you able to make your way around them both? No, I mean, I felt pretty strong, you know, in the corners. I felt like I was catching them in spots, but uh, I was kind of, like I said, losing momentum a little bit off the corners because I just couldn't see. So I knew if I could uh, get them set up and get around them that I, I think I had them covered. So that was my goal. Well, 62 points down now is Texter. It's not over. Up front, Rush and Gauthier, not a huge change there, but Bromley is now up to third ahead of Janish and within one race in the standings. So don't count out last year's champ. Solid second tonight. Hats off to the entire KTM team. I know Shane was riding great all day and we're on identical motorcycles, so it makes it harder for me to say that I had a faster bike or she had a faster bike, but she just outrode me and uh, the whole field. It was, it was great to see both our team get one, two, and uh, both Chad Coase get a second podium today. And uh, I'm excited to go back to uh, New York where I finished second last year and hopefully put it on the top step this that weekend. Shout out to Chad Coase taking third. He's doing double duty because he's going to be racing the production twins class which is coming up later in our telecast. Shana Texter and Dan Bromley, the Red Bull KTM 1-2. This is what the folks from Austria have been waiting for to dial in the AFT singles division. In AFT production twins, Corey Texter undefeated so far this year. We'll see if you can keep it going. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Indian Motorcycle. Be legendary. By Vance and Hines, the presenting sponsor of AFT Twins. By American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. Find your groove at AmericanFlatTracker.com. Production Twins class here at American Flat Track. There's James Raspoli, Black Hills Harley Davidson Pro Beam Race Team. Corey Texter has won every race so far this year. Chad Coase, remember him? Podium in our single division, pulling double duty on the number 49 and putting up a serious challenge to Texter. Yeah, Corey Texter getting the whole shot. Chad Coase would get the runoff turn two. These two riders would go at it for 15 laps. Oh, awesome racing here. Coase makes the move. Texter tries to get him back. And with this production class, you expect great racing. You never know exactly what you're going to get. And it leads to new winners. Chad Coase takes it. Texter still out front in the point standings, though. And James Raspoli puts the Harley-Davidson XG750 up on the podium in third. So these guys are happy. Got a great class to race in with a pretty level playing field. Here are the results. J.R. Addison and Colby Carlisle on the Estimson Yamaha, former singles division champion, finishes up in fifth. So a nice variety of machines. And good to have a new winner, Chad Coase, getting it done.
me and Corey actually train together sometimes, so I knew he was going to be tough the whole race, and uh, he gets really good starts. Um, but honestly, it's just everything coming together. You know, by pulling double duty, it just makes it tough on us. But I like the challenge. But um, you know, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't it wasn't hard to do. And I'm just so happy for my team, uh, Parkinson Brothers Racing, Tom Englehart, my mechanic. Man, we work so hard, and uh, man, just it feels good. And shout out to the Parkinson Brothers Racing team who helped him out. It's time for Dunlop Tire Talk as we get set for our main event in AFT Twins. You have the R5, which is the softer compound, compared to the R8, which is harder. Here at this pea gravel type of base racetrack, the R5 hasn't shown a lot of tire wear, so all the riders have chosen that to go out there and get maximum traction. So even playing field with every rider on the grid going with the same Dunlop tire. So we are within five minutes of our main event. Briar Bauman has been so strong this year. Can Jared Mead start reeling him in in the standings? We're gonna find out after this. Lights are on. We are set for what should be a spectacular main event here on the Pea Gravel of Lima. But first, let's send it back to Kristen Beat. Yeah, thanks, Jason. The uh, pea gravel roost doesn't only affect the rider's vision, but it can also affect the bike. So bike maintenance is going to be critical in this 30-lap main event. When I was talking to Jeffrey Carver and Jared Meese earlier in the day, both riders have uh, altered the bike just a little bit to allow them to be able to race the entirety of the 30 laps. As you can see down here, this is a second radiator screen. It keeps the extra dirt out so the bike doesn't overheat. Also below that, you can see this is a fiberglass engine protector that these riders buy aftermarket. They fabricate to put on the bike just to protect that engine from that pea gravel. Something a lot of other riders are also using, hand guards. This is gonna be huge tonight to prevent that pea gravel from coming up and hurting their hands. So a few alterations for these riders in this main event. And no alteration here. Jared Mees, yeah, he's the promoter of this event, but right now it's race face and focus for him. He's got to start beating Briar Bauman, who was once kind of the student in that relationship, but now they are championship contenders against each other. Jeffrey Carver looking a lot faster the last couple of weeks. He's very good in his semi. But you got, AJ, what do you think? I really like the look of Briar Bauman. So fast, so consistent all year, no mistakes. But Jeffrey Carver right now, first win this year in the semi. I like where he's at on this racetrack. Bauman's lead was ridiculous in the semi, but he did not have to race Carver or Mies or Henry Wiles or some of the other fast guns on this track in that one. Who's going to take it here in Lima? 25 laps to decide it. Whole shot is so critical off of the start here into turn one. The number five, the Estenson Yamaha, Jake Johnson leading them in, but he's going to drift wide. Briar Bauman leads it coming off of turn two, and he's got Jared Mies right with him. That clean vision, so critical. Jared Mees knows that, throws it down in turn three under him. Can he make it stick? No, Briar Bauman's gonna hold on to it off of turn four to lead lap number one. Didn't make the pass, but he's staying out of the roost of Bauman. So these two have hooked up. And remember, second place in the series standings is out of this race, didn't qualify. So it's really between these two right now and they are all over each other. They already crisscrossed lines, passed each other once, twice. Let's make it three times on the SNS on board with Jared Mees. I love the racing here tonight at Lima. Lines a plenty. Riders looking for that grip around the top. Briar Bauman back to the lead. All right, this is going to be setting up. Oh, and Mees responds immediately going way low. And I don't know, did Bauman want to go this high? What do you think? The lap previous, he ran up there and got good bite off of turn two, but Jared Mees this time throws it into the corner, gets around him. Oh, Jared Mees almost Tucks the front tire, stays up. Briar Matt Bauman back to the lead. And the bike bouncing around there under Mies. You rarely see that from him. He's so good at staying smooth, but they are letting it all hang out. And on this surface, you've got to. Mies trying to square it up. He goes in high, comes out low. Let's see if he can make the move. He does. Woo! Great onboards there to see just how close these two are. And that's even closer. Bauman almost ran it in on him. These two passing each other back and forth have pulled a big gap over Jake Johnson. Right now, it's gonna be a battle for the victory amongst Indian factory teammates. I'm glad you mentioned that before our last race in Laconia, Mies went on the record and said he has to change his relationship with Bauman. They were once training partners. He used to be really proud when the young buck was improving his performances, but he said, I can't 
lose any more races. I have to start going after the teammate. We had a good battle here between Price, the rookie, who was very fast in qualifying today, and Jeffrey Carver. Not the start he wanted, but he's starting to move forward. Carver going around the inside. Does the slide job on him. Cannot finish the pass on Price. Down the back straightaway, battle for third, fourth, and fifth. Yeah, because they've got Johnson on the number five right there. Price showing he can mix it up with the big dogs. This is the rider battling for the title last year in the single division until an injury. He's moved up to the Twins. He is not intimidated at all, but he cannot. No, he can hold off Carver. Whoa, and they almost came together again. Bauman and Meads is exactly what you want to see. It's not just points. It's not just momentum, it's not just pride. I gotta figure confidence is a big thing right now. Oh, if Bauman can beat me straight up here, it would be big and he's throwing everything he has at him. You can see these two teammates, they're not riding friendly anymore. This is all about the championship. Back on board with Jared Mees. You see Pryor Bauman turn the bike off of turn two to try to get him down the back straightaway. They've passed the lead for at least 10 times already. Unbelievable, and we're still just getting started. We're on lap eight of 25. How long can they keep this up? Bauman running the high line like that last year as well. Wait a minute. Wheeling caution lights are on. Someone has gone down. Going to give them a brief rest. And it is the 99. Now, normally... Okay, Justin Jones, he is okay. He's just trying to find the motorcycle here and get it back up. So good to see that Justin's okay. That is incredible. These two just swapping it nearly every single lap. Just two different lines right now. Briar Bauman has started running basically around the fence, running a line that nobody else has run, trying to find that little bit of cushion and moisture in the top groove there to try to be able to make passes on Jared Meese. Well, normally when you get a red flag, someone's like, oh, my entire lead is gone. No, because these two were this close already. Let's re-rack it. Maybe Jake Johnson, maybe Jeffrey Carver can stay with them. And Carver's trying to take advantage. And Pearson on the 27, way down on the inside, is trying to do the same. Jeffrey Carver with a much better start. He's now in contact with the leaders. Can he go up there and steal a victory? He's on the roof systems of Dallas, Texas. Metro Milwaukee Indian machine in third. Carver's got the talent and the speed. He's won races in this series before. It's taken him a while to get going this year. We saw in qualifying today that some of that old speed is back, and he is staying right with the leaders. Jared Meese trying to stretch it out a little bit on Briar Bauman. Jeffrey Carver third, Henry Wiles fourth. Yeah, we'll give Wiles a shout out. First time we've seen him up front here in the main, and Carver throws it in, and he's a factor now. He's taken second away for your points leader. Jeffrey Carver says, I don't care if you're the points leader. I'm sending it. I'm going to take this victory. Henry Wiles said, that looks like a good idea. I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> Briar Bauman says, nope, going back to third. But because of this, Jared Meese is starting to stretch it. Wow, so this is huge right now. The restart it has not been the same for Bauman since then. Meese starting to get away. And Bauman, he's got problems. He's slowing down. Your points leader in the entire field is racing by him. Got to be a mechanical of some sort. And it's done. And Briar Bauman's luck has run out. We're hearing it's the tire. Yes, there it is. And the man who has finished on the podium every single race this year, that streak is done. And someone is going to take a huge chunk of his points lead tonight. This is what we've been talking about. Briar Bauman has been perfect this year. No problems, no mistakes. Jared Meese has had two DNFs. All of a sudden, championship completely changed. I don't know if Meese is even aware of that. He just wants to go on to win the thing, but Jeffrey Carver is not going to make it easy. You also got to watch out for Wiles and Brandon Price, and there is Briar Bauman. Nothing he can do. They're not going to be able to fix that thing and get him any points. He's done for the night. He's got to hope, honestly, that Meese doesn't win it because that's going to make up even more points in the standings. Look at Brandon Price here, taking zero gruff from the veteran Henry Wiles. A great battle for third. Price going right back after the 17. These two are just sending on each other every lap, making multiple passes. Henry Wiles back down the inside, throwing it on Brandon Price. Brandon Price says, okay, I'm gonna let you go back by. I'm gonna turn back onto you. And a lot of times these battles, the riders slow each other up, but they have kept the leaders in sight. Your points leader, Briar Bauman's night is finished. Who will take biggest advantage?
he's certainly an interested spectator as Jared Meese tries to take it home in Lima. Welcome back. The Indian Motorcycle Lima Half Mile presented by Johnny K's Indian. Jared Meese is out front. Regardless of who wins this race, though, it's already going to be one of the most dramatic rounds of the season because Briar Bauman, your series leader, podium in every single race this year, is out of this one with mechanical problems. Now, second in the series, Brandon Robinson didn't qualify for the main. So the big benefactor could be the number one of Jared Meese, who is third in points. But Jeffrey Carver and Henry Wiles, they got an eye on him, and they want to take the lead. Look at the line that Jeffrey Carver's running. Lower than anybody, it seems like all the riders maybe have used up the moisture on top. He's starting to make gains on Jared Meese. Now, Carver, they call him the wizard. You see the long hair, he seems super relaxed at the races, but he is one of the most analytical riders out there, and it has worked. His strategy paid off. He takes the lead for the first time. He waited out Meese, but Meese comes right back. Jared Meese caught by surprise there a little bit, but he gets back under Jeffrey Carver. Carver back under him. Jared Meese back to the lead down the front straight away. Henry Wiles just sitting there in third, waiting for a mistake from the both of them. Oh, this is spectacular racing. Three riders who have all won races. They're veterans. They know exactly how they want to execute. How will it turn out down the stretch? Carver to the inside. Meese waited for him to drift high. He's side by side with him again. Elbow to elbow. And again, Meese is able to get it back. Carver gets it again. Meese simply waits. I feel like we're just seeing replays from lap to lap here. Jeffrey Carver throwing it on the bottom, sending it. Next thing you know, Henry Wiles is right there. Carver back under Meese. Oh, oh no. doesn't clear him. Well, that was a gamble. Meese wasn't going to back it underneath. This time, he's stuck with the outside. They almost hit. They've got to deal with Carver and Wiles. So how is Meese going to fend off two riders at once on a track of multiple grooves? Wiles looks fired up. He's running the high line and getting close. Jared Meese found a little something off turn four there. Gapped him by four to five bike lengths. Can Jeffrey Carver fight back under him? Not nah, Jared Meese. Good drive off turn two. Wiles on the Bandit Industries DPC Racing Wilco Racing Machine, and it's getting faster and faster. Now we're seeing a closer battle between he and Carver for second than Carver and Meese for the lead. Is this temporary, or is this Meese's opportunity to break away? Henry Wiles clears Jeffrey Carver around the outside down the front straightaway. He's up to second. Oh, they're right back in it. They're right back on the leader. This is just amazing racing right now going on. These riders hanging it on the line to go get the victory. Okay, they've been doing this lap after lap after lap. There's still four to go. How mentally taxing is it to keep running the game plan? As a competitor, no matter what you're in a, on a bike, in a race car, this is what you love. You love to be at your best and have your fellow competitors laid on the line and bow to you. This is great. Jared Meese, Jeffrey Carver, Henry Wiles, they're loving it. This is what racing's all about. It is incredible. We've lost count of the amount of passes. Carver had Meese. Meese got him back. Carver's trying it again. Wiles is lurking in third. Time's starting to run out here. Yeah, okay, so it looks like Meese reclaimed the number one spot. There's Carver down low. Can't quite get him back. We're in to the 23rd of 25 laps. Carver just calm and cool and collected down on that low line, trying to keep traction. Not enough. This is going to come down to the last corner. Jared Meese, he has his favorite line. He's going to run the middle. Jeffrey Carver, he's going to run the bottom. Go by Jared Meese. Jared Meese takes it back. Henry Wiles is just going to wait for both of these guys to make a mistake. Two to go. And that might be critical every time off of four. Meese is able to wait Carver out. Carver drifts high. Meese gets him back. We'll see if they play it the same because the white flag is on its way out. Oh, oh. they touch there. Jared Meese throws it into turn three by Jeffrey Carver again. Carver trying to get back under him. One to go. White flag. Meese. Carver. Wiles, wait a minute. Agent starting to smoke in the 23. It's not slowing him, though. He's able to take the lead coming out of two. Mees just threads the needle on the high line to hold it. Jeffrey Carver, one more time. You got to send it. Mees blocks his line a little bit this time. That might be just enough to hold him off. Yeah, Carver couldn't get the center of the corner. 
Meeves doesn't have to play any tricks. He held the lead all the way through. Checkered flag is out. Huge win for Jared Meeves. He takes Lima. And the points leader, Briar Bauman, is out. And it's a race he also is the promoter of. Everything coming together for Meese in the series, the night, the race, and I think he's exhausted. Carver and Wilds gave him everything he could handle. I don't know what's left. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I can't imagine how these riders feel. Shout out to Brandon Price, best finish ever for him in the Twins division, the rookie. And Bronson Bauman, the winner of our last race, a solid top five. Here's the Motul move of the race. How do you even narrow it down? I guess the last lap, what the heck? Jeffrey Carver goes in here under Jared Mees doesn't get the pass done right here. And I think right there, not getting that pass done, Jared Meese just has enough distance on him off of turn two to block his line into turn three. Jeffrey Carver can't get around him. Yeah, he had got him on the entrance to turn three nearly every lap, couldn't do it this time. So then Meese was just able to hold it all the way around. This is what American flat track is all about. Unbelievable racing and close finishes. And it's also about the champ taking a win. Jeffrey Carver was so strong in, in the corners, but you just outraced him on the straights and you made, you forced the high line tonight. You made it work for you. Yeah, to be able to take the win here two years in a row, what did that take out of you tonight? Just everything, man. I mean, this is my favorite track. It was my first win. And when you win Lima, it feels like you conquered the world because it's so demanding. I had nothing left in the tank. I know Jeffrey, you know, was probably get, it was giving it his all, and I'm sure he was just as drained as I was. I tried his line a couple times on the bottom, and I just couldn't get the bite off the corner, so I had to go up in the cushion, and the cushion wears you out twice as much because the bike is, you're wrestling the bike through it. And uh, it was the only way that I could get, you know, the drive, and he would come up the inside of me and, like, try to almost block me, and I'd just gas it and run right around the outside of him, and I knew with those drives that I, you know, I had such a big gap going down the straightaway, and then here he came again. You know, it's it's been a really rough season compared to the last two. You know, a couple breaks and just a couple bad races, and so to come out here and to win the Lima Half Mile, the second year promoting it, it's just, oh man, I feel like I won the championship or something, you know? It feels so good. We really needed this. I was kind of down in the dumps. For everybody that was here helping me promote the Lima Half Mile, I just want to give a big shout out that uh, you put a lot of work in to make this happen, and um, this is the baddest race on the circuit. Well, he said that's what he wanted it to be, and it was unbelievable racing. I don't know if there are moral victories in this sport, but if you're Carver, it's by far his best performance of the year, but it does end up with a runner-up ride at a night. He certainly had the speed. For me, just being on the motorcycle is great. You know, seven out of the last 12 days been on the bike, and uh, that choose for me. And to have Roost Systems from Dallas, Texas backing me and let me be able to do what I need to do is, uh, is amazing. And I'm just happy to, you know, put it up here on the podium and dice it for the lead, you know, and finally get back up here again. And uh, thanks to all the promoters and, uh, you know, uh, American Flat Track for putting this on and letting us race. Celebration begins for Jared Meese. The pressure of running the race and racing the race. They're both gone. We'll be right back. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Vance and Hines, the presenting sponsor of AFT Twins. By Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas, the entitlement sponsor of AFT Singles. And by American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. Find your groove at AmericanFlatTracker.com. Sunoco Go the Distance Award standings. These are all the laps completed in practice qualifying and racing this year. Carver now on top. Bauman didn't get all the laps in in the main event tonight, so he slips to third. He does maintain the points lead, but it was 35 over Jared Meese, and now it's 13. So absolutely the champ is back within striking distance. Robinson not qualifying for the main. That hurts him dearly. He's 37 back. Let's talk to Briar Bauman. Briar Bauman with a DNF tonight in Lima, Ohio. Briar, literally, I overheard you saying this as we walked over, riding the wheels off it tonight. Yeah, unfortunately, we had something happen that no one's ever really seen. Uh, the tire popped off after the first restart. Um, I rode it a couple laps with how it was, but uh, yeah, it, it eventually came completely off the rim and it kind of locked up the rear wheel and I almost went through the fence. So unfortunately, with all your highs, you have to come down at some point. I think this is it. So hopefully uh, we can rebound and, and keep, keep working on what we're doing. Also working Henry Wilds. What a main event tonight. Just fantastic racing. That's, as a fan, as a rider, that's what you want to see. American Flat Track showing what it's all about. 
Should have another good one with the New York short track from Weed Sport. We'll have it here on NBCSN Saturday, July 27th at 1 Eastern. Wow, we're still catching our breath from 25 laps of fury. Jared Meads had to win it. He did. In the production twins class, congrats to Chad Coase, Shayna Texter winning in the singles division. Drama in this championship. You want to join us for our next show to see how it all unfolds. For AJ Allmendinger and Kristen Beat, I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for watching.